Ahoy my friends, Ryder here, and welcome to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today we are heading into the new Crisis Dungeon. Uh, we're not going to be taking on the very hard ones just yet. We are going into the prerequisite Mount Nebel and we're going to take it down on hard, so this will be a guide for the hard version of the floor. Um, this one is an not too tricky of a fight. These are the bosses you're going to have to take down. I will say that the blue dragon and the bombs, the red dragon and the bombs, are not so bad at all. It's really the Vajradara Lin, the dragon, which I feel like could potentially have a more creative name. They could have at least called it green dragon or poison dragon instead of just dragon. Um, but yeah, it's going to be Dragon, Vajradara Lin, and then the Mole Crawler. These are going to be the tricky fights in the game. The Mole Crawler is going to be the final one. And something to note right here is that it is immune to physical defense down. Um, so, and since I'm bringing mostly physical attack characters, I'm not going to bring the Sun Umbrella because of that. Also, the Vajradara Lin are immune to defense down and magic defense down. So... The Sun Umbrella is not going to be nearly as effective in these fights. So because of that, I am going to bring the Mithril Rod on Aerith right here, just to kind of like uh, alleviate against some of the damage, especially in the later fights, especially against the Vajradara Lin. They they're like the two big kind of Wu Tai uh, monsters, and they can hit pretty dang hard. So I think that the Mithril Rod is going to come in handy. So to quickly go over my route through the map, there are two ways to do this. So if the Vajradara Lin are giving you guys trouble, then you're probably going to want to take that fight third instead of fourth, right? Because at the beginning here, we have the Ice Dragon and the Bombs, and then the Fire Dragon and the Bombs. In the middle, separating them is the regular dragon with the poison, and then last but not least is the Mole Crawler up here. So my strategy is going to be to take out the Ice Dragon, then the Fire Dragon, then the regular dragon with the poison, then the Vajradara Lin, and then the Mole Crawler. However, if the Vajradara Lin are giving you trouble, you can take out either this dragon or this dragon, then take out the poison dragon second, then the Vajradara Lin third, then double back around to take out the other dragon that you didn't kill down here, and then double back around one more time to take out the Mole Crawler. All right, so that is the overall strategy for the map. Uh, my power here is around 197k. I understand that for free-to-play players, this is a power level that is, you know, maybe not attainable for all players, although I do have some free-to-play friends that are basically tipping 200k right now. You just have to be very patient with what you pull for. Um, you gotta have definitely some luck going into it, but really I think it's just patience and knowing what to go for in the game. All right, so to go over the overall builds for the character, let's go into Cloud first. I'm running the Samurai Garb, the Murasame OB-10, and Zidane Sword. I am running Shiva as his Esper. You can run Ifrit instead if you want. It's just going to depend on which dragon you go to first. So I will take the Fire Dragon second so that Shiva will be uh, charged by then. Um, as for Cloud's Materia slots, I am running him a Ruin Rablo Circle Sigil and a Ruin Rablo Triangle Sigil. You need at least one of your characters to have a Triangle Sigil, and then all the other sigils are gonna be Circle, because the Poison Dragon has one of those double Sigil breaks where you need to break Circle and Triangle, and if you don't break it, you will get hit with a major attack that will probably eventually cause a wipe in your team. All right. In his middle slot, I do have Quake Hera Blow for the Mole Crawler at the end, and it's also noted that the Vajradara Lin are also weak to Earth. I will say, um, stepping away for just a second, that I, I'm almost positive that there will be a Earth Element weapon character coming out, and I'm guessing that in the Mount Nebel very hard version, there's going to also be some enemies weak to Earth, so I'm guessing that sometime in the next few weeks after the FF9 crossover, we will be getting it. I think it could be Zack. Um, but for those of you that beat the new Chapter 4 story, uh, they did show Tifa's costume from when she was their guide in Nibelheim, and so it could also be Tifa as well. Alright, going to his stats, he's got 6.3k HP and 2.8k physical attack. I do recommend having over 6k HP on all of your characters if possible. And then his sub-equips are the Seaside Caller, the Bald Eagle, and the Thousand Waves. 
Moving over to Aerith. Aerith is running her summer costume, Fairy Tale, and the Mithril Rod, which I think will come in handy for those of you who have it, along with Healing Wave, her uh, Limit Break. In the first slot, you're going to run Healing Asuna Poison, and then also on Tifa, I'm also running Healing Asuna Poison. So you're going to have two Healing Asuna Poisons at least. I think two is going to be more than enough to um, heal the poison fast enough from the dragon to not have it DOT down your your team's health too much. In her second slot, I'm going to run Quakera, and in the last slot, of course, a Circle Sigil Ruinra. As for her stats, she has 6.9k HP, 2k magic attack, 1600 heal, and she is running the Beach Parasol, Sun Umbrella, and the Butterfly Edge as her sub-equips. Last but not least, here we have Tifa sitting at 6.9k HP, 2.2k physical attack. She's wearing Amaranth's Guys, Amaranth's Claws in her first slot, and then the Lifeguard Wraps just for extra healing in her second. I am running Ramu right here. I do highly recommend running Judgment Bolt level 5. It's going to help a lot against the Mole Crawler in the end since we don't have a Earth Summon at the moment. And then like I said before, we have Healing Asuna Poison in the first slot, so that's the second one on the team. Uh, we also have Quakera Blow, and then we have Ruin Blow Circle Sigil right here. For the sub-equips, we have the Torn Wing, the Maritime Sword, and the Glare Reed. Alright, a couple things to note. Um, for the dragons, they can hit you with fog. So I am able to kill them fast enough where the fog isn't a problem. I don't have to equip it, but if you do have to equip it, I recommend dropping Cloud's Quakera Blow and putting in the fog there because his uh, Murasame will do decent damage against the Vajradara Lin, and the Mole Crawler is already weak to lightning. So that's how you guys can deal with that if that's going to be a problem for you. All right, that being said, let's get into the fight. Let's uh, smoke it and then hopefully get you guys cleared through it as well. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is just run up here and get this chest. All right, and my strategy is going to be to take out first the first two dragons right off the bat together. All right, so since I brought Shiva, I'm going to go to the ice one first so it charges for the second fight. So this is the ice battle right here. Right off the bat, you're just going to take out the bombs as quickly as you can. All right, so I'm going to leave it on auto for these first few fights just because uh, they're not as tricky as the later ones. Alright, so we're going to take out the bombs right here. We're going to switch to the main dragon. With Aerith, I will use Saving Grace just to uh, mitigate some of the damage. And here comes his first Sigil Break. It's going to be Circle. All of them are going to be Circle except for the Poison Dragon, which is going to have both. Alright, not so bad. With Cloud, I'm just focusing on damage right here, as you guys can see. And we're going to burn this guy down really fast. Should be dead right about now. Alright, so the Ice Dragon's going to go down. Shouldn't be too much of a problem, as most of the first bosses in Crisis Dungeons are. It's really the last couple that become tricky. Alright, if you get a score of 31,000, I think that's basically about as good as it gets. Alright. So for the Trance abilities, here we have Magic Attack 10%, Magic Attack 30%, and Healing Potency minus 40, and then Healing Potency plus 10%, Magic Defense up 20 seconds. I'm going to take the Healing Potency and the Magic Defense up Duration. That's going to help the Mithril Rod. And then we're just going to swing around right here, and we're going to go straight into the fight with the Fire Dragon. Hopefully Cloud has Shiva charged. All right, he does. So I'm just going to start off the fight with the Shiva. She's going to take out both bombs and do a sizable chunk of damage to the Fire Dragon. All right, there we go. And then basically the same thing as before. I'm going to use Saving Grace once. The boss is going to go into his sigils. And we're just going to break down the sigils and then kill the boss. Pretty simple and straightforward. All right, there we go. And he should be going down in about three, two, one. There goes the second fight. I understand that um, for a lot of you guys, you may not have a OB-10 Murasame, but I think by now, if most people have had it since day one on their wish list, you should be getting pretty close to OB-6, if not higher. Um, and it's gonna, it's, it's a great weapon for this entire dungeon, and hopefully it carries uh, in the other dungeons to come. 
All right, so for this transibility, I'm gonna take the physical attack plus 10% right here on the left. Okay, just get a little bit of a DPS boost. Come up here, have Aerith punch this rock out of the way. Boom. And we're gonna get our second chest. All right, and our first group of random mobs. Okay, just take them down as uh, quickly as you can. The bombs are kind of annoying, especially if they get off their burst ability. All right, but being the first set of mobs that you encounter after only two bosses, they shouldn't be too bad. All right, so we're gonna get this chest right here. We should get the uh, Quake Cocktails, that's right. Come up here to this rock, have Aerith punch it once again out of the way. And the next boss is going to be the Poison Dragon. This one I think if you have the Healing Asuna Poisons, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. And if you have the Circle and the Triangle Sigils. If you're lacking the Triangle Sigil, I actually did a video right before this where I didn't have Triangle on. And he wiped me. So it is tricky. Alright, so make sure you have both Sigils. All right, he's gonna go into his Poison Shriek right here. We're gonna switch over to the defensive stance. I'm gonna stay on Cloud and just let Tifa and Aerith cure the poisons. At this point, I'm gonna hit Healing Wind just to uh, save some ATB. And he's gonna go into his first Sigil break up here in a moment. All right. There it is. So I'm going to do triangles with Cloud, and Tifa and Aerith are going to take care of the circles. Boom. After that, just do as much damage as you can. If you need to, you can use your summons, but if you don't need to, definitely save them for the next fight to come. Alright, so that is the Green Dragon, the Poison Dragon, thereby dubbed in this game, Dragon. <laughs> Alright, so that's the third fight down. Now we're going to get into some of the harder fights. So I'll be switching off auto. All right, right here we have earth potency plus 20%, earth potency plus 40%, but we do take a magic defense loss. And then earth potency plus 40%, physical defense minus 40%. So I'm just gonna take the regular earth potency plus 20% right here. I think that's the safest bet, especially because the last bosses, the Vajradar Lin can hit pretty dang hard. All right, so I'm just gonna double check the map to make sure that we're headed in the right direction. I'm pretty sure they're down here. It is. All right, so we're gonna circle around back here, take out this rock. Perfect. You're gonna grab this chest over here. All right, which has a cottage. We're gonna have our second set of mobs, which are the trip, the trip of, Tripopolis. I don't really know what they... These things are kind of annoying though. And for those of you who have fought them, they can be pretty strong, especially if you fight them later on in the matches uh, after like more boss fights. So we're just going to quickly take them down as fast as we can. Once you get through one, they're not as bad. They can stun you and do annoying stuff, but it is what it is. At the end of this fight, I'm going to switch over to manual and slow. Right, and we're gonna take them down. Okay, now we're gonna be going into the Vajradara Lin, and which I think is the toughest fight. That might just be the case for me because of Murasame, but it is kind of a tricky fight. If you need to heal, you can. Um, so I think I will actually use my, let's see, do I wanna use the cottage now? Let's see. Restores 50% of Alex's max HP. Cloud is at 32%. Um, let's see here. I think I'm going to use this now just to be safe. Um, and then we can top up with supplements later on. All right, so going into this fight right here. So with Aerith, you just want to use Saving Grace if you have it. Right when they start to cast their, a their first AoE attack, it does hit pretty hard. All right, here we go. I think actually with Aerith, I'm gonna use it right off the bat and then hopefully get a second cast. It doesn't look like I will. 
Okay, I'm going to use both summons right here before they get it off. Here comes Shiva. Alright, and hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can take them the first one down with Judgment Bolt. Ooh, yes, we did manage to take it down. Alright, switch over to the defense stance and brace for the first attack. Here comes the Tomahawk Boomerang, which will do significantly less damage if one of them is dead. After that, it is weak to earth damage, so just hit it as hard as you can and get through the fight. Alright, here comes its uh, next attack, but it is not going to have the time to get it off. That was actually the cleanest I've ever gotten through it. I think I didn't use Ramu the first time because of the Mole Crawler, but I think that getting through that fight easier is better because the first half of the Mole Crawler fight is going to be long anyway, so I think you'll recharge Ramu uh, no matter what. Alright. For this one, I think the obvious choice here, you can take Earth Potency up if you're having trouble with the DPS check on the Mole Crawler, or you can take the Physical Defense up. So I think what I'm going to do is take the Physical Defense and Magic Defense up, just to be safe. Okay, and then we just have to run back up to the beginning, and, or run back up to the end and take out the final boss. All right, here comes the Mole Crawler. This will conclude the hard crisis dungeon for Mount Nebel. And I'm just gonna get straight into it. I probably could have used some uh, Quake Hera or Quake cocktails right there. So I recommend doing it, um, especially if you're having trouble doing damage. Uh, but I just was uh, running too fast right there. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna be using as much damage as we can. For Cloud, I think I'm going to be using Murasame. Alright, for Aerith, we'll use Saving Grace. For Tifa, I'm going to switch over, use Healing Waves, get everyone top back up, and then we're just going to go into damage mode right here. I'm just going to top up Saving Grace with Aerith, switch back to Cloud, and we're just going to try and do some damage here. All right, I'm gonna switch the speed. Let's speed this up. We'll take this guy down. We do have the healing wind from Aerith for the limit break. All right. And our limit break should be charging back up. Here comes the first blazing ray with Tifa. We're gonna switch over to healing waves. All right, and I'm going to use my Limit Breaks right here, right before it gets off. Okay, get everyone fully topped up. Here comes Shiva. Alright, didn't do very much damage. Switch over to the blue stance right here. And here comes the first Blazing Ray. Which is quite strong. So if you don't take the physical magic defense bonus up, that could do a very uh, good amount of damage to your team. All right, at this point, I'm going to hit it with Judgment Bolt, and it should be more or less over at this point. Let's see. Okay, very close. It's not going to get off another attack. I'm going to switch over to Cloud, and one Thunder Strike, it should be done. All right, guys, well, that is the Mount Nebel Hard Dungeon. Um... Pretty good difficulty, I would say, for what it is. I don't think that you guys will have too much trouble with it, though I will say that if any of you guys have questions, um, I'm always happy to help out. I have a Discord server. You can just leave comments on the video. Um, I always answer all the comments uh, as soon as I can uh, to try and help out as many people with getting through this game as possible. And overall, I just wish you guys luck with clearing this dungeon. You will get some Mithril Ore, which you can use to get some of your weapons up to level uh, 90. There is the S plus for the clear. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys look forward to the uh, very hard guides that I do for the Shinra building right here, uh, which looks like Rufus is the final boss. And then also the very hard version of Mount Nebel, where it looks like the Vajradara Tai is going to be the final boss of this one. So that one's going to be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to getting into it. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I hope that this video helps you guys get your clear of the Mount Nebel hard version. That being said, hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.